Hey guys, this is your friend Koderjeet and in today's video, we are going to talk about how to communicate between the IPC renderer and the view. The view is your front end where all the HTML, the CSS, the front end part of JavaScript lives and that's where you create the, the visual of the page. That's where you interact with the user. And sometimes you need to get data from the back end or hear a message or get some information from the back end even after the page is rendered. And how do you do that? How is it possible with Electron? That's what we are going to find out about in this particular video. Again, this video is made using the latest version of Electron as it stands now. It uses the correct systems, the correct methods. We have node integration turned to off and context isolation turned to on, which makes it a little trickier than usual, but it is easy and I'm going to show you exactly the method to do this. So I have a new Electron project here set up the way I like it. So there is a main function which runs the IPC main. Then I've got a preload file which actually loads up the preloads for different forms. I usually make Electron projects which have more than one forms. So I load up different preload files depending on which form is currently loaded. And in the view scripts folder, in a folder called view scripts, I have my all my forms organized in folders. So there is a home folder and there is a lib folder which has all the front-end libraries. So I'm going to go with this. This is the actual HTML file which we're going to run. So this project is not really very complicated if we run it. You just have a little bit of uh, content on the screen. It's just a, some text, IPC render to view communications, how to update the front end when something changes at the back end and nothing has changed yet. So the first thing, we got to change something. Let's go to the main IPC main. The aim of this project is to have something happen at IPC main and then update the front end based on that. The user will not interact with the page at all. You don't click any buttons. Something happens which the user has no control over. Maybe he got a new mail or maybe something happened in the file. Maybe the file finished processing. Something that, that you know, the user does not interact with happens. And how do you update the front end in that case? Let's find it out. So I've got my IPC main here. This is the main function. And the function create window creates the form that people see. What we need to do is handle the main window. This is the form name that we need to refer to. That has reference to the browser view, the browser window that has all the data in there. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a timer. I'm going to use the simple set timeout function and give it a timer of 1500 milliseconds. And inside of that, we got to refer to the main window, main window dot web contents dot send and we're going to give it a channel name so let's call it something happened and then we can pass whatever data we need to send to the ipc renderer to the main to the main view process let's create a counter let's call it i counter and let's create it here let i counter equals to zero and just before this statement, let's add, let's increment the counter by one. So now the counter should increase and it's going to pass this value to something happened in every 1500 milliseconds. So the next task is to go to the preload file, which has the preload for the view. And then we need to modify it here. We need to capture the message here and expose it to the main world using a context bridge. So this line is actually not correct. We will need to set up a context bridge here. Context bridge dot expose in main world and let's call it index bridge and pass index bridge in here. That's done. Now let us expose the function that will do the callback. We'll expose a callback here. Let's call it something happened. Callback and goes to IPC renderer dot on something happened and again call back okay so I see the spelling mistake gotta fix that at both ends there we go and that should be it now we need to trap this event in the front end 
So let's get down to that. So this is my index HTML and I refer to this script called index.js. It's the front end script. It's right over here and I've got some basic stuff over here, but I'm not going to modify the document content loaded event at all. What I'm going to do here is call the function in the context bridge window dot index bridge dot something happened and we're going to have a little callback again and I counter put it over here and here we can modify the front end so our our little div has an ID called change so let's do that document dot query selector we got to find the item the element let lm i equals to and then we just need to send the value of lmi dot value or let's send the inner text actually in our html or in that or in our html will do fine and something happened and we're gonna just interpolate i counter over here and that should be it our code should work if everything is fine so let's run it i've got the debugger configured in vs code so i can just run it using f5 and we have the code here nothing changed yet and i see there is an error here lmi in html is not a function so we need to actually assign it a value we did a mistake there no worries so instead of the parenthesis let's just put a equals to let's save it and run it again here we go something happened one so the event did fire but only once because we used a set timeout if you want to see more counters we need to actually use set interval so i'm gonna just change this set interval and i think that should be enough let's check it out run it one more time and here we go three four you can see that the front end is changing on its own based on the data from the back end this way you can use it to get any sort of data from the back end and populate the front end with it it can work with api calls it can work with any kind of timers it can also work with for file changes for databases or anything else that you want i hope this video was useful for you and if you liked it please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel i will be back to you with more lessons and we will be better programmers together this is your friend Kodajit signing off.